The American Freedom Radio Network proudly presents, live from Phoenix, Arizona, the Truth Denied Talk Radio with host Roxy Lopez. Join us here every Friday from 7 to 9 Central for topics you won't hear on mainstream news, such as chemtrails, GMOs, Morgellons disease, and much more. Humanity is 7 billion strong. We are the majority. If you would like to speak to the host, the call-in number is 218-339-8525. And now, live from the Valley of the Sun, your host, Roxy Lopez. Welcome to the show, everybody. We're live from Phoenix, Arizona. It's the Truth and Night Talk Radio, and I am your host, Roxy Lopez. Hey, before we even get started, I want to be sure to thank Danny Romero uh, at American Freedom Radio for asking me to host my show here. I am thrilled. It's an absolute honor. Love the time slot, too. It's a different time slot for us. I want to also thank a friend of mine, Sean David Morton. Uh, he's the one that turned me on. We actually had an interview about a week ago, and Danny heard the interview, and here we are. So, rock on, people. Listen, today's topic is... Uh, Oh, it's pretty heavy. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, about Morgellons disease, uh, we're going to talk about this today. And uh, one of my guests today is uh, Dr. Will Spencer. He's working with some patients with Morgellons. You won't find an MD in this country, in the USA anyway, or the, or, or the uh, European countries. I don't know any doctor that will work with somebody who has more gallons basically the cdc uh put out a report about i don't know about a month ago saying it really doesn't exist and they've been pretty much doing that for mm, 20 years so we're going to get into this we're going to talk about this this is what our shows are all about people they're putting some awareness out uh a lot of subject matters that the the general public is unaware that certain behaviors in the medical field are occurring. And I just have to commend Dr. Will Spencer for actually taking the bull by the horn, so to speak, and researching this disease along with uh, GMOs, which we're going to talk about as well today. Uh, The two other guests we're going to bring on a little bit later uh, are Melanie Fritshaw from... Brussels. Uh, her story is just amazing. Uh, she will uh, discuss what what it means to have more gallons and and what has happened to her life. If you guys want to go to the Facebook page, for those of you who are uh, older listeners, uh, you know the Facebook page is Roxy Lopez on Facebook. Uh, we just posted some photos of both of these gals. Marie Pollock is also going to be our guest. And she also is a sufferer. Uh, she's from Sweden. So we're going to bring, bring them both on. But first, let's, let's introduce Dr. Will Spencer. Uh, let's get talking about uh, what you do. Uh, welcome to the show, Dr. Spencer. Uh, glad, glad you could make it. Good evening, Roxy. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Will, what... Uh, Let's talk a little bit about um, your studies with Morgellons. Like, when did you start with that? Uh, when did you first come across Morgellons? Um, what what led you to Morgellons? I, I know that you also have some other discoveries and some other work that you've been doing with bees and colony collapse disorders and so forth and GMOs as well. So start wherever you want. Would you know back us up a little bit and give us a little bit of information about you? Oh, a few years ago, about three years ago, I guess now, um, I was seeing this word Morgellons. Um, and actually, I had some, my own theories, I guess you would call it. So um, I got a hold of uh, Mr. Carnicom and uh, wanted to share some things because uh, if you, you type in some of these, these uh, catch words, his name is like right up at there at the top, or at least the uh, Carnicom Institute. So um, I got a hold of uh, Cliff and uh, attempted to express some theories of mine and some uh, research directions. And that's what led me down this road. And uh, after Cliff was uh, basically un- uh, unwilling to uh, you know, uh, look at some other uh, directions, um, 
uh, I left there and uh, now I'm with the uh, Margellans Research Group dot com and uh, uh, it just uh, kind of snowballed from there and uh, we've been helping I don't I can't even give you a number right now um, of people uh, that with uh, the Margellans and Margellans associated symptoms and actually getting some extremely positive results. Excellent. Um, and for those who don't know who Clifford Carnicom is, um, he was one of the first. And if, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, he was probably the first uh, person to go out publicly about chemtrails and study chemtrails and what they were spraying like 12 years ago, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, he was one of the first. Uh, him and uh, Clay Douglas uh, with the uh, Free American uh, dot com. They were. They were some of the first ones that I come across. Actually, uh, Clay was the, the first back I, um, in about 2001, I believe, that I contacted. And, uh, but uh, Clifford was the second. So, I mean, it, it's been out there a while. It's just been getting popular the last few years because more people are starting to exhibit the symptoms. Right, right. And And what are the symptoms and what, from your view, from your studies, what exactly is Morgellons disease? Um, my uh, view of Morgellons is basically the result of industrialization. Be- the list of symptoms is extremely long. It's almost similar to like a fungal and inf- a fungal overload, pathogenic overload, and there's so many related uh, symptoms. Uh, the key, some of the more prominent ones, being the body actually growing these fibrils or hairs, uh, the body producing artifacts of some kind, uh, that whether they're uh, some people, I've even met a couple of people that are producing plant-like material growing out of their skin. Um, there's actually these uh, non-earthling type of insects being uh, come out of their body. I mean, unbelievable stories that I would never have believed it unless I was standing in their, in, in their house witnessing this uh hexagons i mean on our website uh margellans research group dot com there's probably a thousand pictures that you'll you can see the the they're they're just they're real it's unbelievable it's like the science fiction channel um come to life absolutely i agree with you you know as well if people want to see some of the you have photos there and everything and uh uh our website does as well uh, the truth and com. if they look under uh gmos or margellan's disease tabs they can see some of the studies that we've been doing for a couple of years with uh caroline carter out in cyprus but back to what you're saying i i think what first blew my mind uh when the subject matter was introduced to me uh via one of our webmasters uh, you're right. You just use the term science fiction. I-, I thought this can't even be real. It blew my mind. You know, I started with, you know, research on synthetic fibers. Um, you just you just explained it a little further. But, you know, synthetic fibers meaning something that can't and should not be growing in the human body and then colonizing in the human body. And some of the and and, and of course we're we'll have Melanie and Marie on in in about twenty minutes to sort of expose like what 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 they're actually going through physically and mentally. But there are many components to this. Now, why do you think, uh, Will, why, why do you think that this is such a big cover-up? I mean, uh, the Morgellons was reported 20-some-odd years ago. Um, according to da- uh, Dr. Caroline Carter, she says it shouldn't even be called Morgellons disease. It should be called GMOD, which would stand for Genetically Modified Organism Disease. What do you have to say about that? I am totally aligned with that. You are. Well, absolutely. the theory makes sense, you see. But what is the cover-up? Why is there such... I mean, to interject for a moment, she is testing via hair samples. She's testing in the country of Cyprus. Eight out of ten people, and it doesn't matter the age group, by the way, little children all the way up to the elderly, eight out of ten are testing positive for Margellan's disease. What's going on? Uh, what's going on? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question because um, actually there's a lot of uh, patented uh, data um, in, that I, I have found and people uh, 
uh, like to share when they find uh, un or declassified information that used to be classified. Uh, I have a uh, report from 2004 that talked about the nano and micro technologies of um, unmanned, basically smart dust, which are microscop smaller than microscopical particles that some of the components of that smart dust are showing up in people's body coming out through these little black specks and, and showing up in some of the fibers. And so you tell me what's going on. I think it's madness, but the body is responding by trying to push the stuff out through the skin or whatever, and it's affecting our genetic expression. It's affecting people's health, and it's horrifying, especially when you have this. Yeah, well, and, and, and absolutely, uh, from what I've found from interviewing different people who actually have Morgellons disease, there's a psychological component to it as well. Um, can we talk about that a little bit? But we'll let Marie and Melanie explain more of that from a first person uh, later on the show. But can you just give us a little heads up on what the psychological component to having Morgellons disease is? Well, well, picture things coming out of your body and put yourself into a spot to, to, to even comprehend that, that for one, are not natural, for two, hurt, have lots of pain, and for three is when you go to a medical practitioner in allopathic medicine, the only thing that they have for you is to label you delusional when in in fact, you're producing these things. So you want to talk about traumatic emotional experience. When you're telling somebody that's supposed to be a caregiver or a provider, which is really, the, you know, I mean, I don't even want to go down the negative side of that, but they're supposed to do a job. You expect them to do a job, and they're telling you that you're delusional and this ain't real. Right. Right. Okay. And and thank you for saying that because it's isn't it interesting that that's all the medical field is referring to it as is something you know that the patient is delusional and and that's you know you use the word maddening I think that that is. Uh, over the top. Now listen, I I I spoke with a doctor, an MD. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's a friend. And he told me that he started looking into Morgellons about 15 years ago because of some of the patients that were coming in with dermatitis, I believe. Uh, and he believed back then that something was, was going on. And, um, but he nearly was suspended for even trying to run a few lab tests. So, with that in mind, uh, what, do, what, do we, what are we looking at here as far as why the even medical doctors who take a Hippocratic oath, you know, to heal? Um, and this isn't just happening in our country. This is happening uh, all over the world. Europe, Canada, United States, we're, you're, 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 you're having the same exact reaction. In other words, you're told that you cannot. Uh, even examine the patient. You can't put anything under a microscope. Now, what would be the pro what? Why? Why? I, I mean, are you allowed to examine patients? Uh, Will are you are are you uh, for fear of losing your license? Well, first of all, um, I don't call them patients. I call them clients or partners. Um, in the natural health world, we're not bound by licensure like the allopathic medical model. Mm -hmm. Allopathic medicine has licensures that are government. Sponsored, if basically you are a, uh, you know, there, you are governed by those you are licensed with, and they may say they have the Hippocratic oath, but in reality, they get to a point, and this is so classical that they they change their tune is when they get so far into researching what you have going on. And there are so many medical doctors that are leaving the profession because they, they give an uh, oath to do no harm. But when there comes down to it, they're not unable to actually help. And there, there always becomes a, uh, a decision to make. Am I going to stay because of the paycheck and the security of that uh, licensured uh, – job, if you will, uh, or not. And I believe, I think it's all a cover-up. I think 
the medical field is covering up for the governmental field, which is covering up for the agricultural field, which is, you know, everybody's in bed with everybody else because the technology is overlapping from the agricultural to the the Environmental Protection Agency, the FDA, the uh, the and the medical field, the AMA. They're all linked together, and when you start getting uh, truth to a point, then they clamp down on those that hold licenses in those fields. Meanwhile, they're leaving uh, patients or sufferers hostage because there's nowhere for these Morgellons patients to go. They they can't get any help anywhere. And then, like with the stories that are going to come up, where they which are ag- Absolutely shocking with Melanie and Marie. Uh, once you are diagnosed as a, a quote unquote crazy person, let's just call it, then there are the many effects. Your, your life gets destroyed from that point. So we have Morgellons patients or Morgellons sufferers, let's call them, uh, who write me quite a bit in the last two years and they're afraid to go to an md they're afraid to even step into a doctor's office to even suggest that this might be what they have and this is obnoxious it's horrible uh what you know we'll talk about a little bit more later in the show about solutions to that which i think that you're very involved in those solutions but i think you're right too i think you're you did that that the, you have government and private corpors, corporations who are in bed with one another. I think you hit the nail on the head. And um, and this seems to be across the board uh, with everything going on today. Um, but then again, we have people like you, Dr. Spencer, who are uh, going to step up and, and, and help and aid these individuals. Now, briefly, what are, what are you doing right now that is working with your patients or your clients, I should say? Sorry about that. Well, for one, there's always an associated fungal load uh, or pathogenic load of some kind, um, and that that seems to be uh, across the board. Um, another thing that across the board, there's a mineral deficiency and amino acid deficiency across the board. And oh, there's a break. That's cool. Hold that thought, and we'll yep. be right back with Dr. Will Spencer and Morgellons disease. Us out, Marie. Are you still there? I am here. <laughs> Great. Okay. So, uh, sounds like they cleared it up. Thank you. So, Marie, can you, uh, express to the audience your story? What has happened to you? Uh, your dealings with the medical field, et cetera? Uh, yes, I will try. I, I'm first glad that, that you invite me here and, uh, 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 it's, um, it's very important for us who is sick because um, I have been sick for over seven, eight years, and I didn't know that I have Magellan's. Um, I think I heard it from just for two, three years ago. So uh, when I uh, begin to be sick, so it was like I think everybody else uh, with uh, that was most. Uh, infection and you know you get, you get tired, a lot of headache and and I begin to thinking, oh my my body is not the same. But I have a company in that time, so I still work and uh, keep going and on. And I was stressed and pressed because of the company. But suddenly I, I get worse and worse, or get more allergy, migraine um, uh, attacks. Uh, I'm sorry for my English, but, you know, I'm from Sweden. <laughs> yes, so, and you're doing just fine, Marie. You're doing absolutely fine. Go ahead. Yeah. And, uh, and then um, uh, I, I began to go to the doctors, and uh, uh, I have a little problem with my neck. So they said, oh, it is from your neck, and you have um, uh, whiplash and, and uh, different kind of disease. So I think, ah, but th- th- that was a different uh, kind of feeling in the body. But after a while, I became more allergic, and I thought maybe it's there's something in my saloon. And after that, uh, the sore begins, and my hair suddenly begins to be uh, electric. So it was like uh, it's flying, and then I have 
like you see in my first picture. So it's it was like I have a spider web over my face, and everybody thinks, oh, she begins to be stressed and crazy. And I said, oh no, there is there is something going on in my body. And mm. uh, I have worked because my company was in uh, the industry of uh, cosmetic and, and skin. So I thought the first time I met uh, uh, the, 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 the Dharma, uh, dermatologic clinic uh, in the hospital that they believed what I said because I said, oh, no, I have sore. And that was very deep sore who, who will not uh, uh, leak. Uh, 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 oh, what's name in English? Who <laughs> will uh, not going over? So, uh, so it was very deep, and the 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 sore behaving strange, uh, and uh, because of my work, I I uh, begin to research what's happened to me. But after a while, so I thought they they believe what I said when I said, oh no, there is something. It's feelings like I, I'm swollen hair and. Uh, and I was so honest, and I didn't hear uh, because I was so stressed in the same time that it, uh, I think the, the most of the people who has this, uh, what we call it, nightmare, uh, they, they, they think, they, they, it sounds crazy, everything, when you begin to talk about fiber, oily effect and your apartment is uh, affected and my saloon was affected, my, my company was affected uh, and you know uh, but in that time I think oh they, be they must tr believe that I, I, I speak the truth and uh, there was so many uh, vis visiting to the doctors uh, and hospital and 2008 I was in one month in um, in in a hospital, but um, then they said, "Oh no, you pull off your hair and and uh, you make you sore because you are so stressed. You don't know what you do." And and for me that was unbelievable because uh, I, I have worked 25 years with skin and and I was uh, <laughs> take care of my. Uh, outside very well so I think what did they tell me but after a while I get so sick and and I, I couldn't uh, uh, couldn't explain in the right way because then the folks uh, come in and, and I have my remember I couldn't uh, if somebody asked me what is one plus one I couldn't say two because then I, I was totally off. So now, uh, now, now, Marie, when you were going through this the first few years, and like you said, mm -hmm. uh, and this is very common, your story is very common with Morgellons patients, you know, um, that you have the lesions. I think that was the word you yeah. were looking for, the lesions on the skin. Yes. And <laughs> sort of, right, okay. And just sort of popping up here and there. And um, and uh, and you did express before to me that it is hurt when this is happening. Yeah. And then on top of it, you become very tired. You can be become very depressed. Depressed. Now, uh, when you went to the doctor, the doctor told you that, just to be clear with the audience, the doctor told you that you were making all of this happen. You were making the sores on your skin. Is this correct? Yes. And it's so funny, because not funny, it's so... Ironic. Uh, it makes me very angry because they said it and I now... Five years, four and a half years later, I put out the files from the hospital and really read what they have uh, written about my disease. And now I, I have found out they, they said I have the delusionals and uh, I, there was some psychological sickness like when you are, uh, have delusion that you... Uh, uh, <laughs> look at yourself and then nobody else see it but you see everything happens to you but the, 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 that is so uh, unbelievable because everybody saw first I begin to my hair fall off and then I, I begin to change in my face I get swollen 
I, I, I didn't recognize me after I, I, the, the, the whole of this have uh, going out in the body because it's look that I was another person. When I, when I look at in, in the mirror, I couldn't recognize me. And then they will tell me I have a psychological sickness than, than I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, have uh, some uh, illusional about I change. <laughs> so, but now I have uh, <clears throat> let the, the sorry, uh, let all the psychiatrists uh, to do the research of me and uh, now it's written that I have no delusional, I have no personality disturbing, and and uh, my only problem with my psychologic uh, way now is that what happened to me, because in all this year I have uh, forced to, to move with my kids uh, four times in that condition, you know, I, I, I lose so much. It's about a lot of money and a lot of uh, things because I couldn't do. It was, I just su uh, sit down and look, everything uh, goes away from me. And I couldn't even say, stop, oh, please help me. Because uh, after a while, everybody thought I was crazy. But now, now they begin to understand. Everybody begin to understand now. But then... That will be give a little psychological problem because you must handle the the that you that you have lose that you live like a homeless person almost and before I think it, what, yes I think what you're trying to say here is that you know with the idea that it costs money you were running a company your health was going downhill like somebody maybe who uh, has cancer or this or that is same kind of thing right and so you're losing things but I'm glad to hear because you've come forward you're getting more and more public about your situation Marie more and more people are also getting to know you and people who have more gallons uh, like uh, who's going to come on uh, next is Melanie and you remember Melanie we did a show with yeah. uh, Melanie Vishan as well and uh, y y this way and then you've got Will Spencer uh, also in the mix and quite a few others so it, now you're because you went public which is kind of a a freaky thing, and I understand it, Marie, because you, this isn't something that we want to tell the world when, you, when we have a disease like this that doesn't exist in the medical field. So I completely mm -hmm. applaud you. You are a courageous woman, Marie, we, um, and you deserve uh, to be uh, helped and to find a cure for you, etc. So I'm I just want to say I'm um, thank you, and I know how nerve-wracking it can be to come onto a show like this where you're speaking to the world. And uh, listen, I've studied the disease. I'm not a doctor, but I've studied the disease enough to know uh, what you're going through. And uh, I think that it's public awareness. And so you become the spokesperson for others to help others, Marie. So I want to tell you thank you so much for that. Yeah, and and I'm I study now. I'm I'm so not healthy because my body is very weak. But now I study by myself, so I have found out a lot of things how these fibers works, and and it's unbelievable what I what I understand. It's more logic, and uh, and uh, that's because I want to speak because I know there is something I can pull pull out these things every day and now I have learned to how to do it because it's very important for for the Mugellons uh, uh, in the beginning to not do that wrong because uh, if you see something maybe you want to take it away and then you can hurt yourself uh, so I, I that's I, I find I will try my goal is to find out uh, with, like Will and everybody, how we can have a cure for this, how we can help people, what they should do in the beginning, because have 
had a, I have all this answer and fact and information that I have today, uh, two, three years have, has, I don't have to need to have that horrible years that, that I never can explain how I felt. And I think there is even people today because they don't know they have Mogellons. Uh, th that's, that's my goal, and with you, I hope I can help other people. We will also continue to work with you, Marie. You've, you've been a light in a, in a dark room. So, um, yes, of course. And, you know, briefly, um, Dr. Spencer is on the line with us as well. Um, will, what are some of the things, because I know that you've been also, uh, speaking with Marie. What are some of the things that are working for Marie right now? Uh, well, I, I just started speaking with Marie, so I really can't talk to that because we we've just been communicating. Um, so um, it was just it's just a new uh, a new relationship here. So I am where I haven't been in in uh, uh, progress that far okay. with Marie. Okay, Marie, what 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 are some of the uh, what are some of the things you are doing that is working? I guess I should say, and maybe uh, so. Will you haven't uh, yet? given her anything to try out yet is that correct correct okay all right well marie when we come back from the break we'll uh talk about some of the things that might be working for you and we'll also bring on melanie Pollock from sweden uh i'm sorry from brussels and we'll be right back so hang in there with us folks All right, we're back with Dr. Will Spencer and a couple of our other guests, Marie Pollock from Sweden and Melanie Fl Fritchen from Brussels. Uh, glad to have you back as well. Uh, you, we haven't introduced the listeners to Melanie yet, so why don't we uh, go ahead and do that real briefly, and then we'll get back to the question that we had for Marie. So welcome to the show, Melanie. Yeah, thank you very much, Roxy, for having me on the show. You're very welcome. Melanie, uh, we were just discussing with Marie uh, what it's like to have more gallons, some of the, uh, what she'd gone through, losing her business, um, not being able to really get help. And then uh, we were just going to start off with uh, some of the things that are helping Marie, uh, because I guess she had taken and tried different remedies in the beginning many years ago and just sort of failed in a lot of areas. And she wanted to warn the public as well that there don't do all the things that she did because they didn't work and they made it worse. Um, but before we answer that question with Marie, Melanie, why don't you tell us what's going on with you because I'm so sad to hear the very recent story uh, from you a few days ago where uh, you're, you have your son taken away. And a lot of the public is absolutely outraged for this. Melanie, why don't you share what's going on with you, please? Yes, uh, so, uh, yeah, I live in Brussels, uh, I've lived here for 20 years, and um, four years ago I, I got infected with Morgan, which means that I, I saw the first symptoms, this st uh, strange material fibers and, uh, coming out of my skin, and nobody could really tell me what it was or could help me, so I saw so many doctors. And, uh, well, it's, it's a long story, but um, basically uh, the father of my child started a custody battle over that, uh, I was just telling everybody I'd gone crazy because uh, I was thinking that there was some material coming out of my body or that there was something in my body. And, uh, well, it's been a very, very rough ride. But basically, yeah, as you say, Roxy, the last developments are indeed that there was a uh, psychological expertise ordered by court and that although this psychologist wrote very positively of, uh, regarding the, the relationship I have with my son, that I'm a good mother and, and uh, yeah, so that a very good, good relationship with my son. Uh, but she finishes off saying that, uh, but unfortunately this mother is delusional because she thinks that there are things in her body that, or that her body is kind of invaded by, by some, some nanotechnology or something anyway that is not natural. And uh, so that means uh, she's delusional and her child should be taken away from her because uh, these delusions are dangerous for her son. And that's what happened. So it's, it's, it's been really dramatic consequences on, 
on my life. Absolutely. I've been following your story, Melanie, and like you said, you had uh, quite a few positive letters written on your behalf uh, regarding your condition, regarding your frame of mind, uh, and yet they still decided to lean towards uh, taking away your child, who you absolutely adore. Uh, I have a picture of you and your child on uh, Facebook. Uh, he, he is absolutely beautiful. You look so happy together. And and uh, I, I, I'm so sorry and, again, absolutely appalled at the audacity and the stupidity uh, of anyone who would take a child away from their mother. I've spoken to you many, many times on video, on Skype, on radio shows, and you've never exhibited any sign of delusional or crazy or unfit mother. Uh, and you even have letters to support that you're not an unfit mother. Uh, and I apologize. And we want to help. There's a lot of organizations. Why don't you mention some of the people who are, who are trying to help you? Yes, well, I mean, actually, for uh, to begin with, it's actually the McGuidance Research Group. Uh, Dr. Will Spencer, that is here tonight, who has been a great support. Uh, he was also one of the, uh, the people that actually wrote letters to the court confirming that this condition exists, that he's helping people uh, that suffer from McGuidance, and th- that uh, it is indeed um, uh, partly a nano- non-technology that auto assembles and auto replicates in the body because that's what my ex husband had told everybody that uh, I, I apparently thought that it was something linked to a technology and that it was completely crazy. And also the this psychologist picked up on that, said how crazy this was. So I want to thank Will that is here for his support and also his colleague Catherine Augustine, who's the McGowan's Research Group secretary, who also wrote a supporting letter. Uh, Marie, uh, who's here too, had uh, written uh, two testimonies uh, saying that she suffered from McGowan's herself. And uh, there were many, many testimonies also because there's another organization I'm, I'm part of, I'm working with, that is uh, ISAX, this is the International Center for the, uh, Against Abuse of Covered Technology, ISAX.org. Um, where uh, I'm in contact with the president, um, Jesse Beltran, uh, and many, many other members and, and victims, and uh, also the, the attorney, attorney, sorry, um, the lawyer uh, working with this organization. Uh, I want to thank, thank him as well. Dr. Henning Witte wrote a letter saying, well, I can... Uh, confirm that I defend vi- uh, victims that, uh, of a technology, of nanotechnology, which is what, what Morgellons is, or at least partly. Uh, and this is, n- this is nothing to do with a delusion. This is not some kind of uh, delusional illness, but that's very, this is very real, and I can confirm that I defend victims of this technology. Well, all this, so I had a quite a lot of support, I must say. Um, that was really great. Uh, and still uh, it was ruled that I was delusional and a danger to myself. Basically. That's that's very interesting, and I, and I can understand uh, 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 to one degree, uh, one thing. If they allowed you to have more gallons, in other words, if they openly admitted that you have this disease, both of you, Marie and Melanie, then what would happen is the cat would be out of the bag now because he, uh, more gallons, you know, doesn't exist apparently. So, in other words, you become the victims of many different layers of this, don't you? You become a victim for your health because you can't get any health benefits from it. In other words, you can't get any practitioners to aid you, to help you along, or to cure you, or diagnose you or what have you a and b then you start losing your livelihood c like marie lost her business from the illness because she wasn't getting any better and has to self-diagnose and then melanie for you as the progression moves forward now you lose your son your child your small child so it has many layers and then on top of it you can't even get the courts apparently from what you and marie have said melanie you can't even get the courts to help you eat either because they don't even know what really what it's all about and if they help you then they sort of open the can of worms so again i'm so sorry for you but but both you melanie and marie one message that you have and it's very very clear to me 
The public needs to know what happened to you. The public needs to be in contact with you. And this becomes awareness for many, many sufferers. Now, you, re- you, you mentioned, uh, one of the gentlemen who's also helping you, Bertrand, uh, Danny, or uh, what, is that his name? Jesse Bertram. Jesse Bertram. That's right. Thank you. Jesse Bertram, you know, he has, how many people does he, has he contacted throughout the world? Oh, I think he's, he's, he's in contact with thousands and thousands of individuals. So, um, All right. I think it was 10,000 or something like that when the last time I spoke to him. So with Morgellons disease. So hello. Uh, thank God for their, uh, group. I'm going to have him come on the show at some point too. Not today unless he calls in. And by the way, speaking of callers, uh, the second hour, we will be taking your calls, uh, at 218-339-8525. That's, uh, 218-339-8525. We will take your calls. Um, and Melanie and Marie, I have one question for you because uh, uh, I want to know, can you stay for the second hour of the show or is it just too late uh, where you live right now? No, oh, I'll stay with great pleasure. So no problem for me. And how oh, about you, Marie? For me. I it, have, uh, I'm like, it's today for me now, so it's already <laughs> it's already morning. Okay, now uh, Marie, we'd asked you a question, and, and we might have time to answer it. What are some of the things that you remedies uh, that you are using today for for your body? What are some of the remedies that you're using today for your body that seem to be working for you? Uh, today, I have tried a lot, a lot, and. Uh, uh, but now I uh, take MSM. I don't know uh, because there is some who calls the, the uh, it's a difference between MSM and MSM. I, there is a two, but uh, this is from Sweden. And then I take silver water. That have that ha- have I found out if I don't have it, I can see. A different because sometimes I have not afford to buy it, and uh, then I have uh, immediately see I get worse, or especially then with the oily effect. Uh, and uh, when I have no money at all, then I try with uh, apple cider vinegar uh, and uh, baking soda, so I can uh, peeling off, you know, this oily effect, and especially in, in my skull in my head and, and that helps a lot and another uh, and with uh, that something I found out who is very very strange and I, I cannot understand why but with castor oil when I put castor oil mixed with baking soda and the vinegar there is something to happen because the black fiber uh, going together in and, and it's very easy to take them away uh, that hair who should not be there and I don't know what's happened because I have tried with coconut oil and it's all right thank you Marie yeah. it's all right so uh, these are some very good ideas um, we're going to take a short break here and we'll be back with Dr. Will Spencer Melanie and Marie subject matter is more gallons this is the truth and I talk radio Hi, we're back with the Truth Denied Talk Radio. I'm your host, Roxy Lopez, and we've been having a conversation with Dr. Will Spencer and, of course, uh, Mel- Melanie Frischon of Brussels and Marie Pollock of Sweden. Uh, very serious subject matter regarding Morgellons disease. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, Marie and Melanie suffer from Morgellons disease. And, of course, Dr. Will Spencer is uh, researching the disease and uh, doing what he can to help uh, the Morgellons community, and that's what we're calling it today. If you want to call on the show and uh, ask some questions, the number here is 218-339-8525. We are live from Phoenix. Dr. Will Spencer, I have a question for you. In light of what uh, Marie and Melanie have just uh, uh, told us, 
Um, what are Marie was just getting through her uh, dialogue of some of what is working for her uh, baking soda uh, on her skin or mixtures, uh, uh, the vinegar, the apple cider vinegar, I believe she mentioned. Um, are these some of the things that you are also looking at as far as uh, helpful aids for Morgellons patients? Uh, yeah, to hold the symptoms down to a, a dull roar, if you will, or to, you know, as looking at the symptom relief, uh, the common common products like that work. Um, I'm actually working more um, on the genetic end of it because there is some uh, crazy genetic expression that's taking place, and that's the angle that I'm using, um, and I use a little different methods uh, of my core program that I've put together to actually get the uh, the uh, different gene expressions taking place as well as the chemical aspect of this because there seems to be like in Melanie's case is it Mel no Maria's case uh, you know a long time standing working with uh, 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 hair products and uh, you know the hair salon uh, type of products which are extremely toxic and there there again along with the chemical aspect there's the the uh, the fungal pathogen aspect so. Um, that's the angle I'm working on. But what was what Marie was saying for uh, the the vinegar and the uh, baking soda and some of the uh, just common products, they work good for uh, controlling the symptoms. Absolutely. Okay, and and that's great. And um, let's see, uh, Melanie, are you using any of these types of remedies for yourself as well? Well, not really. I, I must admit. So I try to. Um, well, I've always been before a very uh, sporty person. I used to run marathon. I, uh, so uh, obviously I can't do this anymore now, uh, but suffering from a gallon. But what I do is uh, I try to eat healthy. So I try to eat a lot of vegetables, um, a lot of yogurts. Uh, uh, I'm, I try to take care of my, well, my food intake, basically. Uh, that's something I... I do. I must admit, I do not uh, do so m many things like like Marie uh, working with uh, uh, apple cider, I believe, and 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 a fan. And um, but uh, maybe I should. <laughs> maybe I should try that. But I I personally don't do that now. Okay, I have something interesting. So uh, earlier on in the show, we were talking about uh, Morgellons, uh, the, the name of the disease. It shouldn't be called Morgellons at all. Uh, it should be called GMOD, which is gen genetically modified organized uh, 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 disease. Uh, listen, in March, seven European countries, now speaking of GMOs, Seven European countries, Belgium, Britain, Bulgaria, France, Germany, Ireland, and Slovakia, blocked a proposal by the Danish EU presidency to allow the cultivation of genetically modified plants on the continent. That's pretty heavy stuff. Today, or actually I should say yesterday, Poland wants to ban Monsanto GM maize, which is uh, MON810, genetically modified strain of maize. Again, that's MON810. Agriculture Minister Marek Sawicki told reporters that, quote, adding that pollen of this strain... Again, referring to the MONA10, could have harmful effects on the bees. Now, with that in mind, what do you have to say to that, uh, Dr. Spencer? Well, the pollen is actually a pesticide now, and it is affecting the bees. And uh, there was a study just out, I think two days ago, was published in The Ecologist in the UK that stated that without a shadow of a doubt... The, the genetically modified plants, the pollen coming from them, are directly related to colony collapse disorder. Is that right? Yes. It was in The Ecologist you know, out, of, out of the U.K., Okay, so with this in mind, in March, seven European countries and now Poland, uh, just yesterday, wanting to ban 
uh, Mon- the use of this Monsanto uh, uh, GM maize, I guess it is. Again, back to the name Morgellons, which is as Caroline, Dr. Caroline Carter calls a no name because she thinks it should be called GMOD, which is genetically modified organism disease. Now, with this in mind, can we? Uh, I'm going to ask Marie and Melanie first, and then we'll get back to you on the answer. Will Marie and Melanie, are you familiar with GMOs, and 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 do you personally think that GMO foods had anything to do with your current condition? And Marie, we'll take your answer first. Uh, y- yes and no. Because uh, I have found out uh, since I began to eat more healthy and uh, take care of uh, what I eat. Because before when I was a real businesswoman and uh, eat uh, very, very wrong. So uh, I, can, I can really feel, especially one year ago when I, that was... I, I don't. I can't. I can't explain it. But when I eat something, I could immediately feel something strange in my mouth. So I, 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 I knew this is not good. And uh, the same with my stomach and everything, because it's going inside. So that I believe in. Uh, there is something with that. But there is so many other things because I have the most problem out from outside. From the environment and from uh, now when the pollen and, uh, and uh, the trees, uh, so I have a lot of allergy and dust and I, I can do nothing because uh, my, my body reaction for everything, for um, electricity and everything. So, so you're, yes, you're basically think... allergic, sorry Marie, you're basically allergic to everything, is that what started to happen? Like you're, you're mentioning the word allergic, I just want to be clear that, that this is the correct word for you, that you become allergic to everything, what you're eating, the air, outside, pollen in the air, etc. Yes, I, I, I feel immediately what I am, I cannot see when it comes from outside, but I can feel when I eat or when I touch on something that I, I don't, uh, that I have a reaction from. So, Can you describe so, the reaction that you have? Like when you say when you touch something or you put the food in your mouth, what exactly is the reaction? The reaction is it's like uh, uh, for the food, I can feel it. Inside in my organs, you know it, uh, uh, and in my mouth, on my tongue, it's um, uh, like if you are, uh, have a allergy for apple, for example. I don't have uh, that kind of allergy, but uh, for example, then you suddenly feel that you swelled in your uh, vessel, and um, okay. Uh, but not so much for from the food. For me, it's more outside. I can go, for example, to shopping and, uh, you know, there you can buy milk and there is a big refrigerator. Uh, suddenly, I, I begin to be shaky and electric and, and my uh, vessel uh, uh, begins to swell. So mm-hmm. then I, I, I feel this reaction. Okay. Allergy. Okay, and Melanie, do you have any of these types of symptoms whatsoever? Well, I have, I mean, I know how this sounds, but I have definitely, um, I could definitely feel, <laughs> it's very, very difficult for somebody who doesn't suffer from my guns, but uh, a constant flow of, of electricity going through my body. It's like, <laughs> uh, I mean, this is, uh, I can... This is uh, basically um, Magellan's, at least in part, is an an invasion of human tissues by nanotechnology. And I can feel these wires under my skin. I can feel the pulsation energy or, let's say, the electricity going through. Uh, So I, uh, yeah, (laughs) I uh, react very strongly to any electromagnetic uh, 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 frequency or... So I can relate to what Marie said that she, she, she well, she feels that when she's near to a refrigerator or any kind of electric uh, device. Uh, regarding the um, 
uh, GMO food. Uh, yeah, I believe personally that our food uh, is poisoning us uh, <laughs> uh, as we go along, um, uh, slowly but gradually. So I, I, I'm sure it has something to do with that. Um, I can personally recall that uh, before for my job at once, once we had a, a dinner, I don't know if that's linked, but we were uh, told that uh, we're eating gen genetically modified food. That, uh, but we were, of course, told not to worry and that's perfectly safe. And, uh, of course, today I know that uh, that's absolutely not the case. So I know I've consumed it in the, in the past, um, at least on one occasion. And what I think is interesting in that respect is that uh, when Marie and I first got in touch, uh, she told me that her first thought were, were when the, these McGowan symptoms uh, started, that she was poisoned. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so really felt that you were poisoned. Uh, Marie, explain that. Yeah, I I had, uh, you know, in this story, there is many stories. So that's because I can identify me with so many things. Um, and I had a, a, a divorce, a very hard divorce, not uh, emotional, uh, but with everything else. And um, so after a while, I begin uh, to think maybe... My ex man has ex husband has uh, poisoned me because I found uh, some uh, big insurance on me. So I was uh, uh, I didn't know about Magellans and everything else. So when everything begins to happen to me with this electricity, with oh there was so many things that happened. So I think oh maybe somebody had uh, poisoned me with the ventilation because I get sicker and sicker on my uh, uh, on my spa I have a, a very big spa and a saloon so uh, in the end uh, I begin to you know looking after what can what can it be and I saw this black stuff and uh, some sparkling things uh, around me and on me and on, on the products uh, and then on in my home and there was a lot of things happening in that time who was uh, really, really weird. And there were so many things that happened in that time. So after some year when I understand they, they thought I was crazy or, or they thought I didn't uh, tell the truth. But I, I'm a very honest uh, person, so I may be too stupid to sometimes because I'm 100% honest and, and telling, oh, this happened. So after a while, when the real strange thing begins to happen, and then I, I was, I really believed that uh, somebody poisoned me. So uh, I, I, I take a step back and uh, don't tell so many things that I do today what really happens. So yeah, that must be it must be absolutely frightening and it sounds like the you need you both Marie and Melanie have reached out to the world at this point um to get some sort of fellowship going some sort of support for what you're going through um and and that's and this is only going to be good for you and good for others who have any of these symptoms um again if you uh those who are listening if you want to go to the truth tonight's website uh just go to the more gallons uh menu drop down underneath and go ahead and take a look at all the photos and all the blood now i'm an interesting thing and i i'll ask i'll, I'll ask dr will spencer about this um December December seventh, nineteen eighty two, there's a US patent four three six two two seven one procedure for the artificial modification of atmospheric precipitation as well as compounds with a uh demethyl sulfoxide base sulfoxide base for use in carrying out said procedure and the question is why modify do with demethyl sulfoxide 
Well, demethyl sulfoxide is a compound used to carry any substance you like straight through the skin and into your ce- into your cells. It's a fantastic compound when used correctly in medicine, but very nice to have on one's skin unknowingly. Whatever follows DMSO will enter your cells. Um, do you, do you know anything about that, uh, Doctor Spencer? Yeah, I know about the uh, the DMSO. Um, I actually use it in some of my topical applications because it does carry things into the into the body relatively easy. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're use, uh, there. I mean, I should say the uh, nanotechnology and some of these other patented uh, uh, technologies use that particular product, so the nanoparticles get absorbed right in through the skin, also. And I have some other patents too. I, I shared one with you in the chat room here a little bit ago about. Um, uh, this this patented um, uh, uh, technology and uh, it's been around for a while, like you said, you know, in 2002 or longer. Oh yeah, right. Um, so th- is this why Morgellons uh, sufferers are also? And I find this in my own research, but this is about you guys. The question is going to be after the break. Do you find a connection between chemtrails? And Morgellons disease. We'll be right back with Dr. Will Spencer, Marie Pollock, Melanie Fritchen, and this is the Truth Denied. I'm Roxy Lopez. Marie and Melanie. And uh, boy, we're just, uh, we just asked the question, and uh, I'd like to know the answer. I'm sure the public would too. Is there a connection between Morgellons disease and chemtrails? Dr. Will Spencer, I'll let you you take that one. I would say there is because the, uh, the uh, some of the components that we're finding the artifacts coming out of people's bodies are being detected in the air. So um, and the uh, at pretty high altitudes actually, and so that would lead me to believe there is a connection as well as not only the components, uh, the, the fibers and the so and the metals that are coming out of people's bodies are in people's bodies, uh, but also the uh, these uh, exotic or new lab-created microorganisms, uh, genetically altered ones, are showing up in people's bodies as well as in the atmosphere. So, uh, you know, it would only believe, lead me to believe that there is a direct connection. Right. Um, and... I don't know if uh, I know Marie and Melanie have done a lot of research as well because they have this disease. And let's go with Marie on this. Marie, do you think there's? Did you find any connection with, for instance, chemtrail days, the days that they're spraying a lot? That you had any sort of reaction uh, to the spraying? Uh, yes, uh, I think that because uh, now when um, I have um, I, I know a little more be- before, I didn't know so much about uh, chemtrails. But uh, now when uh, the before when I have these uh, real reaction days in of al- allergy and, and I, I I look around and I couldn't see. But now I have uh, begun to look up in the in the sky, and uh, for example, last week I have so really pain. I have pain in my head every day, like headache. But this day was a different kind of headache, and uh, I felt uh, uh, like I was throwing up, uh, but I didn't. But you know that, that uh, uh, kind of feeling. And then there, there was a lot of a plane who, who I could see that in the Swedish chemtrails, uh, chemtrails uh, uh, website that uh, they said, oh, today they, they sprang a lot. So, so I, I really believe it. And, and well now I, I thinking after, because when everything happens to me, then there was so much dust in, in my home, and I didn't, I didn't understand. I think, oh, it's my boys who. who, who from the the socks or something because the dust come all the time and 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 I was afraid of this dust in the air and 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 I think of course there is something uh, mixed with everything with food with chemtrails uh, I think we, we there is a big connection with everything 
Okay, and so, Melanie, what do you think? I uh, know for a fact that there is a connection because, um, I mean, one of the groups I'm also working with, I um, and I got a lot of support from them as well, is uh, I'm in contact with a, he was a former mayor here in Belgium, and he has um, founded a civil rights movement. It's called Belfort Group. And I think two years ago, they organized a chemtrail symposium here in Belgium, uh, where they also invited a journalist, a medical research journalist that I also know. It, she's called Desiree Röver, very intelligent woman, very brave also. also. She's from the Netherlands, and she uh, gave a presentation there, uh, and especially regarding the link between chemtrails and Magellans, so uh, basically uh, presenting the uh, the substance that found in, uh, in rainwater, so um, which is the fibers and which is basically matching uh, the the material that is uh, coming out of Magellan's patients. So it's basically the same, or it's definitely related. And why I also mentioned this is in this custody procedure that you've just mentioned, uh, uh, Roxy, uh, that you have been following on everybody here, I believe. Um, when uh, the psychologist said, well, um, the mother's obviously got, uh, gotten really crazy now because she, she believes it could be linked to some kind of nanotechnology in her body or coming out of her body. I said, okay, well, if everybody thinks I'm crazy, why don't we ask somebody really qualified? And I got in touch with this uh, medical research journalist, Desiree Röver, and I said, well, Desiree, what do you think, if, according to you, what is Magellan's? And the answer that came back was saying, well, according to me, first of all, she made it very clear that they were the linked countries. And secondly, she said, according to me, it's a kind of test or testing on certain people in view of uh, transhumanism and the creation of artificial intelligence. Uh, and this uh, kind of answer, her research basically was also put in the court files. Uh, and obviously ignored for the reasons that you have pointed out very correctly, I, I believe, Roxy. But, uh, yeah, there is a connection, uh, and uh, it's been actually proven that there is a connection. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Dr. Spencer, um, you know, uh, what Melanie and Marie are just referring to, synthetic biology, I mean, people need to wake up. Uh, the biologists in our country alone, I mean, there's just miles and miles of information that goes along with what they just said now uh, and supports everything that uh, they just relayed to us. Um, there's there's so much money going into it. It's unbelievable uh, as well. So, Will, what would you have to say, though? <laughs> What's your opinion on what Melanie and Marie just had to say uh, in regards to synthetic biology and all the rest of it? I am totally aligned with that. Uh, I know the technology exists because the patents exist and because the programs exist. There's enough information out there. Uh, it's fairly, uh, it's not readily easily to get at some of it, but um, uh, the uh, I've had a, a couple of researcher friends of mine that are that well, a couple of them have been killed. One's still alive uh, for trying to publicize how to dismantle that technology. And actually, one of the creators of that technology through the military is a uh, researcher friend of mine, and he's actually woke up now to the fact and helping me put together a plan which we are uh, having extremely good results with for dismantling this technology inside the human body using bioremediation technology. Um, and can you and and can you? Uh, I want to back up just a, just a second, and then I would love to hear more about the bio. What, did you say bioremediation? Is that what you said? Correct. Okay. Um, you you mentioned that somebody died trying to publicize or dismantle uh, the research or expose the research. Yeah, there was a couple of uh, 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 researchers that I had known. Uh, one, uh, I'm not going to mention any names uh, right now, but the uh, he was actually he took and raised the uh, an acre of genetically modified corn. And he 
uh, it, he had access his laboratory at the, at the uh, Texas A&M, so he had access to uh, DNA, looking, being able to look at the gene expression in the DNA. So he planted the one acre. He used the bioremediation technology in the soil, and at the end of that one growing season, the genetic manipulation of the original seed that, that he used to plant the crop with was not there in the the seed of the of the corn plant. So in one growing season, one cycle, they completely reversed the genetic expression or the genetic modification expression. Uh, so uh, and he was attempting to publish that in his findings or with his with his other findings to his peer in a peer review and he had one of these mysterious deaths you know that mm -hmm. are so common with microbiologists in the last few years mm -hmm. um so and uh, and I've since met some other friends of his also that say the same thing i mean it was just totally uh, mysterious craziness but it was all on the heels of him publicizing this information and here's a you know a 30 plus year scientist researcher and then all of a sudden this happens when he was re ready to publish something very sensitive like that but yet very uh, much in tune to help humanity but not the industrial sector all right and then I guess my next question would be is this diabolical Anybody in their right mind looking at this long enough, and I've been looking at this for quite a few years, you, in my opinion, you can't come to any other conclusion than that. So what would you say the motives or the efforts of these companies? I mean, there are a lot of different views on this, so I'll just throw out a few of them. One is money, control, uh, power uh, to control the the. the the pharmaceuticals that are in charge, the corporations that are in charge who have strong-armed the government, um, this whole New World Order agenda, um, or is this a genocide like the uh, Georgia Guidestones talk about? Uh, is this a genocide where they're just going to wipe out, you know, the great culling type of thing, wipe out, you know, two-thirds of humanity? Or what is this? And if eight out of ten people are testing positive for Mergellans, uh, are they going to cook up a cure for this? Is that what, what's going on? So they're basically, you know, uh, or is this, or is this, an, is this a uh, terrestrial disease, or is this an extraterrestrial disease? That's that's another uh, one that's come up as well. So, what do you think? Do we have a uh, selection for all of the above? Because I would definitely check that box. Really, all of the above. So, so it's a little bit of everything, and uh, maybe there's just a, a a lot of companies involved now with chemtrails. I think that uh, I've interviewed uh, Rosalind Car Carter uh, and a few others on this subject matter of. Uh, chemtrails and who's doing it. You know, everybody wants to know who's doing it, who's doing it, who's doing it. I have my own research on it as well. And Rosalind Peterson came right out and said it's the Navy uh, in our country. And I can testify to the fact that when I see chemtrails, it is the military flight pattern that I see the massive, massive aerosol spraying. So if it's our own military, what are they doing? And uh, why would the military, who's not a private corporation, be in bed with a private corporation, you know, to spread this junk? And what are they spreading and what are they spraying anyway? No, they're they're a for-profit company, just like the government is in this country. You look at uh, Dun and Bradstreet. All military branches right now are all listed on Dun and Bradstreet, just like the United States of America Corporation, just like the Internal Revenue Service Corporation or the FBI Corporation. It's all a for-profit uh, corporation that we're not understanding. Then it's all for profit. They wouldn't even be doing it if they wouldn't be getting paid something, in my opinion. In your opinion, so uh, it, 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 and your opinion's valid. Um, Marie and Melanie, and I'll take Melanie first. Do you find that the, this conversation of uh, 
the multiple layers uh, of ET and you know uh, Earthlings, you know uh, biologists and and microbiologists and all this synthetic biology and this and that blah blah, and then chemtrails and the military being involved and private corporations and everything else, and then the testing being so high of eight out of ten people have Morgellons disease in the area of Cyprus. Now I don't know if that's testing worldwide. I will say this. And then I'll ask the question, every sample that we have sent in, my organization has sent in, every hair, every single hair sample that we have sent in, the 100% of them have tested positive for Margellan's disease, 100%. So, again, Melanie, what do you think? Do you think that it's, a, it's this multi, multi-tiered layer of madness? Um, and if it is, how would one begin to escape Morgellons? For instance, you have no cure at this point, but maybe you can get some relief from the side effects. But are you worried that this disease is going to kill you? Oh, yes, uh, I am. In fact, um, what I believe uh, is that it is actually it's an effort to transhumanize us and also to reduce our lifespan at least, so I am definitely worried. I think it's very, very worrying what you say that uh, you've got such a high rate of uh, yeah, positive, uh, yeah, testing positive. Mm, um, uh-huh. It's very worrying to me. Uh, regarding the checklist <laughs> that you gave before, and also as a sufferer, I can say it is pure evil. This is definitely diabolic. Um, and I would check everything, just like Will except the alien connection, because I would say that it's purely man-made, uh, this, 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 this disease or this condition. Um, so, uh, yes, it is worrying. I worry that I, um, yeah, that I die from it. Uh, I definitely do. Uh, and also what really, really, it has, I mean, really definitely destroyed my life. Uh, I cannot work anymore. I, I mean, money-wise, this has been a down-going spiral. Uh, also, I've lost a lot of friends. I had a very, very active social life before, but uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's... We'll get right back with you, Melanie. Hold that thought, sweetheart. Uh, we'll be right back with the Truth and I Talk Radio for the last uh, 20 minutes of the show. Freedom Radio. You guys rock. I'm glad to be part of the family now. We're here with uh, Dr. Will Spencer, uh, Marie Pollock of Sweden, and Melanie Fritchen of Brussels. And uh, people, listen, the, the whole idea behind this, I think what everyone here is trying to express, and I thank you for coming on the show. I thank you for being so courageous, and I mean that. It is courageous to come out and say what Marie has said and to explain this disease like Melanie has and to be part of the cure like Dr. Will Spencer. This is really important stuff. It's real. It's not a conspiracy, people. It's real, and it makes me want to cry. Seriously. Uh, I want to be part of the solution, too. So we've all got to sort of, you know, get together, unify. It makes me crazy that we're not. I don't know what Pete, what, I don't know. You know, Melanie, I'd rather be you. Marie, I'd rather be you, and I mean this. And I'd rather be you, Will Spencer, than be asleep on the, at, the, at the wheel here. At least you're all awake. And you're a part of a very important time for humanity. A very important, wonderful uh you know, change. We're going into a new age. Anyway, enough of me. So, Dr. Will Spencer, uh, this, uh, what, uh, Melanie had mentioned before the break, this transhumanizing. Uh, whoa, that's a big word. What, what does that mean? Um, altering, altering, altering our, our, our being, our human transforming the human being uh there is a free video if on youtube um if you just type in transhumanism uh, i forget the name now uh, but there's a gal named sophia that did a great presentation it's about an hour long last year 
and it, she explains it. And there's actually several scientists on YouTube uh, that will gladly explain that. And it's it's, I mean, it's a science fiction. They're trying to improve the human. Well, and 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 let me ask you, Marie, has, has this been an improvement? Uh, it it felt I, I think uh, when I have uh, now heard about this and uh, read little uh, because in the beginning I always said to everybody when I try to explain how I feel it it feels like I I am a snake who, who will uh, change the skin I feel I I uh, have the second skin over me it's not me it's like I have a I'm uh, I'm a, have a mask all over me, uh, and even when I look at my skin and look at my face, I didn't recognize me. That was not my hand, not my skin. In some in, in two two years, I think I have this feeling before I try to get rid of of this not human being skin. I so. There is something logic in, in it, it. It's so weird, everything, and it's unbelievable. But but you can identify with so many things. So I, I believe, that, I believe in everything that I can personally and my own uh, experience, what I have gone through, uh, say yes, I believe in this. Right, and 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 I get what you're saying. Um, you also have a, a very positive attitude. I don't think that you, neither one of you, Marie or Melanie, would have survived this insanity um, if you didn't have such a powerful uh, mental attitude. You just have such a strength about you that's actually um, uh, infectious as well. It's it's in other words, uh, it's it's. I think that you inspire people uh, by your story, uh, even though no one wants to be a Morgellons patient, uh, but you inspire people. And, uh, Will, you had mentioned earlier in the program that you are doing some uh, uh, something to help Morgellons uh, patients. Can you reiterate what uh, you are trying out that seems to be at least helping to mitigate those symptoms? Hello, Dr. Will Spencer. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I had pressed the mute by accident. I'm sorry. Um, um, on, uh, you can find out more uh, on my website. Um, Why don't you go ahead and give out your? Go ahead. Uh, bodyelectrician.com, and the first page that comes up when you go is called Nature's Chelation, uh, and it's it's been around for a, quite a long time. This uh, it's also known as bioremediation. So what I've done is taken the use of microorganisms and chelating elements of the, the minerals as well as the microorganisms because they actually are responsible to break down and digest or remediate the chemical aspect of this as well as the nanotechnology aspect of this and to help build the immunity. So in, that in itself is a, there's a longer explanation, but that should be brief enough to give you an idea. But it's just a practice that's been around for quite some time, but never put into the use in the human body until just recently. Right. Okay. And um, and people can find that on your website. So that's excellent. And um, is this something easy to do if somebody were going to uh, take the uh, information and try to utilize it? Um, and is this only for Margellan's patients or is this for just about anybody? Is this sort of a cleansing thing that's going on with your thankulation and the rest of it? Well, I, yeah, I recommend this for everybody because everybody's breathing air. Everybody is, uh, you know, the, even the organic food is contaminated with genetic modification because of pollen cross contamination and so forth. And the, the, it's just basically restoring nature in, into the food chain again because the food chain has been deficient and we, and they've been knowing this since the, the early 1900s. Uh, so it's basically just, saturating your body with all these good things from nature that are not there anymore and the body then is able to uh, restore some kind of homeostasis uh, in in this chemical soup that we have to live in right 
Absolutely. And, and, you know, there are a lot of doctors that are coming out with, as you had just said, uh, different liver cleanses, safe liver cleanses. Um, and the public is having to take on this, you know, this, uh, uh, form of, I don't know, self diagnose and self healing. Although, you know, doctors have said for years, I know my own doctor said it, you know, don't try to self diagnose, don't try to do any of that stuff. But more and more people are having to do so, especially when you have somebody like, you know, Melanie or Marie who have been suffering for years with something, uh, this disease and not knowing what it is and doctors not telling them what it is. It's just outrageous. So, you know, I thank you for, you know, the help that and, and the aid that you can give them as well. Um, and let's see how this goes in the future. I would like to keep in touch with uh, all three of you to see if uh, you're going to be taking on anything. And is there anything else uh, for, let's say, uh, Melanie? Uh, well, actually, Marie. Marie, do you have anything that you want to say? Uh, we're going to be wrapping up the show. Um, anything you want to say to the public? Just some, some something uh, that you want to tell the public uh, before we let you go? Uh, yes, I, I'm very grateful that, that uh, you have invited me tonight. And I hope uh, if somebody thinks uh, they have, they, they, I think... If, you sooner they started to take care of their self, like uh, Will Spencer, he has uh, many advice and, and uh, uh, try to do by themselves, because if you take a lot of me- me- psycho- psychological medication, then you lose some years. So uh, if you begin to be sick uh, and everybody tell you you are crazy, uh, so the best way is to close your ear, close the the ear, and don't listen, and take care of yourself. Okay, that's a, that's great advice. And uh, Marie, thank you for staying up with us and into your now next day in Sweden. We really appreciate it, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And please come back on the show again. Okay, Marie. Yeah, thank you very much. You are so lovely, and and, uh, I really like uh, to be with you here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. And Melanie, uh, what what would you have to say in parting words? Well, um, first of all, I also would like to thank you for um, inviting us and especially addressing this subject. And, uh, well, I think a lot of people are really, really... Uh, yeah, uh, in despair, a lot of people have killed themselves, but I think that um, uh, having this disease and not getting any help uh, and being called delusional, um, but I think that uh, there are people that want to help us. I mean, you're the best example, and Dr. Will Spencer, and this gives hope, and uh, it's why our shows like this that we can... Thank you, Melanie. And Dr. Spencer, you uh, give out your website one more time, please. Uh, that's bo- bodyelectrician.com. All right. Uh, that's www.bodyelectrician.com. We're also going to have a video of all of this, and, and we'll, we'll be in touch again. Thank you so much for joining the show. We really appreciate it, okay? All right. Thank you, Roxy, so much. Oh, you're you're so welcome. We'll we'll definitely be in touch. And uh, again, it's our first show with the uh, American Freedom Radio. Hope I didn't butcher anything here. Um, the producers have been awesome and very very uh, helpful. Uh, we'll be back again next Friday. 7 to 9 Central. Hey, stay tuned. My good friend, Sean David Morton, is next. And he's a riot. He is awesome. So hang in there. Love you guys.